for our first entrepreneurs, deciding what to wear for the toughest pitch of their life was easy. They took inspiration from their product. With the costumes that we're wearing, hopefully we'll get a very positive and quite a standout reaction from the dragons. We're looking for them to smile. Hi, Dragons. I'm Joe. And I'm Andy. And we're the co-founders of Just Be Drinks. Today, we're looking for an investment of £65,000 in return for 10% equity. Just Be is a light and refreshing flavoured spring water drink. But the difference is, instead of adding refined sugar or artificial sweeteners, we use a single drop of honey. Each drink is completely natural very low in sugar and less than 50 calories. But why honey? Well, my dad's a beekeeper and my granddad was too. I grew up having my dad's honey in cups of tea instead of sugar. A few years ago, I mentioned this to my friend Andy and we wondered, why do you never see soft drinks with honey? This was the start of our big idea for a healthy drink using honey. Well, we had a fantastic first three months gaining listings in premium retailers Selfridges and Fortnum and & Mason. We're now stocked in over 100 outlets across the UK and Ireland, from delis and coffee shops to hospitals and office canteens. We've recently started discussions with the national retailers. We feel this is the next exciting step for Just Be. Thank you. Now we have some drinks for you to try. Andy Sugden and Joe Harper are on a mission to refresh the soft drinks market. Thank you. They think £65,000 should do it, and a 10% sweetener is on offer in return. Peter Jones wants to share his thoughts on the entrepreneur's attire. I won't go through the sort of days you have in the den. And when those doors opened, and I saw you two coming out dressed like that, I really thought we've got a couple of Charlies coming in, and I was terrified. Um, my first reaction is, why hasn't this happened before? We're asking the same question, why? You haven't found the answer? No. The success you've had so far, could you quantify that now in, yep. in terms of sales? So sales for the first 12 months was £50,000, and an operating loss of £38,000. What capital did you put into the business each at the start? So in total so far, we've put £33,000 each in. Okay. And we have also received some additional investment from a high net worth individual already. And what's his name? Uh, he's called Simon Leonard. And how much did he invest? So he put in £150,000. OK. He got 23% for that. OK, so right in thinking that your net assets are currently sitting around 170 k No. So the current balance sheet is about 45,000 of stock, okay. about 19,000 of debtors, about 94,000 pounds of cash, and 36,000 pounds of creditors. What's that make your net position then? 121,000. Can't tell you how many people can't do that. We've spent 20 minutes trying to get that out of some people. Very impressive. Peter Jones doesn't hand out plaudits very often, but the entrepreneur's firm grasp of their business's books has clearly made a good impression. Now, Deborah Meaden wants to find out whether these golden boys also have green credentials. What I want to talk about is sustainability, because the mm -hmm. story's lovely. The fact that your father, your grandfather were beekeepers, um, but actually one of the problems that have caused colony collapse is intense farming of bees. Okay. So to just drive a load of product fueled by honey is a little bit counterintuitive. Mm. Yeah, some think... beekeepers take all of the honey away from the hive and then fill it full of sugar, sugar yeah. syrup. Yeah. We've made sure that all of our beekeepers and all of our supply, they're completely ethical and they leave enough honey for the bees to survive winter. OK. That was, oh, that, really, that was, that my, was yeah. really that was my yeah. question. Yeah. For yeah. Us. Yeah. Because if you're telling a lovely story about bees, that needs to go all the way back to the hive, you know, yeah, absolutely. We, we're looking after these as well. Um, but 
you're not going to like what I'm going to say, but this is only me personally. I don't actually like the taste. Honey has a very slightly antiseptic taste, doesn't it? I personally don't know, no, but... it's probably just me. You liked it, you liked it. Can I just ask? Oh, I loved Did it. Did you like yeah. it? I like it. I, I know what you mean about the taste. I do know what you mean about the <clears> that's taste. Why, that's why I don't put honey in tea. Yeah, yeah. there's Because a it, slightly... it adds a flavour, sugar doesn't. Yeah. Mm. It's the first time I think yeah. we've heard that feedback about... Although you've heard it from three people here. Yeah. So, I mean, now I yeah. mention <laughs> it, yeah. A slight sting in the tail from Deborah Meaden, who declares the taste of honey not to her liking. But the dragon with a portfolio swarming with drinks investments couldn't agree less. I just want to start with saying I love the product. I really do. I think it's got Thank a you. great flavour. Um, but I don't think it's a very mass market flavour. And the squash market is not going to be substituted with that. The water market will go, oh, this is a nice treat but will still want to um, hydrate themselves with water. But just because it's niche, it doesn't mean that this is not possible. It just takes a lot of power and a lot of marketing. What is your price point? What would I buy that for? Our RRP is £1.69. That's quite a luxury, isn't it? That's, that, I'm trying to see where it would go. Can you walk out of here, make a phone call to Tesco? Where would they put it? So in, in the first year, we've placed ourselves in, in a sort of a, a premium category of, of, mm -hmm. of, of this flavoured water. But once we get to volume and we're in the likes of Waitrose or, or Sainsbury's or Tesco, we'll be looking at the price point reducing to £1.49. Because I can see it in the Pret, the Costas. I'm struggling with it as a supermarket product because it is, it's very premium. To put 10 of those into your supermarket trolley, I think that's quite, it, it is quite a big ask. When the queen bee of the beverage market doubts your drink's ability to reach a mass market, it's not good. But Peter Jones thinks he may have hit upon a solution. I can see this getting you into the, the smaller players, like the delicatessens, the specialists, exactly where you are. But then your mass market product, you see what Robinsons have brought out with their small little squeezy concentrate. I don't understand why you didn't think about bringing out the very ingredient that actually goes into water in the first place, in a bee-like squeezy. So that actually that's the product that goes mass market in supermarkets, radiates your brand. It's a lot more cost effective to the consumer to buy that, and it comes in a bee little pack, you squeeze it into your glass of water, yeah. kids have it at home, yeah. it's brilliant. I've got to say, what Peter's just said is, I hate to say this because he's going to go on about it forever now, so I'm now but I am going to say it is actually genius. Because that's your squash market. Mm. If you can produce the concentrate effectively as a squash, that's your mass market product. C can I just ask about the stability of honey? Because, of course, there's a crystallising issue with honey. That is a fantastic idea. It might but work. I, I think there might be a technical issue why you can't make cordial with honey. It, ah, it but no, it doesn't. Sorry. Once you once it's dissolved, it doesn't. Are we are we still debating we Peter's idea? I know, if sorry. we are, if we are, I actually Peter, just think it's Peter such needs a to stand up there. idea. Anyway, guys, while they talk about while they talk about my idea yeah. and sorry. discuss amongst themselves, I'm gonna make you an offer for all of the money for twenty five percent of the company. OK, would you like to respond to that now? Well, look, you're, I would prefer that you didn't try and negotiate, and then at the end of all of this, we can share the honey. <sighs> Beehive yourself. <laughs> like it. Oh. An offer from Peter Jones, whose ability to catapult a brand to the big time is no secret. Will the cordial atmosphere continue with a bid from Deborah Meaden? First thing I will say, I think you've done a great job. I love the branding, I love the authenticity. You could have won me over on any day of the week, but unfortunately, I don't like the taste. And for me to be a 
really engaged with something, I've got to be able to sit here and say, but it's lovely. And I would be very clear about that. That's personal. I know people will like this taste. So that's the only reason. But I won't be investing. I'm out. OK, thank you. Um, I, I, I love the story and uh, a big fan of bees. I'm slightly concerned that the honey flavour might make it fairly niche. Um, in that the people who love it, but there'll be a lot of people who won't. So, for that reason, I can't get over the line, so I'm out. Thanks. Guys, um, I like what you've done. I think great. And you, I like you guys too. However, I think in this sector, which is not really my sector, you've got a perfect offer from a perfect dragon. So, I'm not even going to play numbers with anybody on this. I'm not the right dragon for you guys. So for that reason, I'm out. Tuka Suleiman steps aside graciously, joining Nick Jenkins and Deborah Meaden in going out. But Peter Jones doesn't yet have the deal in the bag. Could drinks tycoon Sarah Willingham just be in the mood to mix things up a bit? I really like the product. I've said that. I love the flavour. I do think in its current form, it's going to be a real struggle mass market. And I've spoken to the buyers of the major retailers, the big supermarkets, and this is an area that they see is very saturated. There's a lot of people in there already fighting for the space. And I do think it's going to be a a hard sell. So I'm sorry, I'm out. So that's Sarah Willingham out of the picture, leaving just that one offer from Peter Jones. Now, it's all down to the negotiation. We hope someone was going to make this competitive. <laughs> Twenty five per cent is a long way away from where we were at ten. We really do believe that this could be huge. Is there anything we can do? Um, I don't think so because I do think it's one of these situations where it might not go anywhere. You know, I'm not gonna say you don't have a brand yet, because you do, you've done really well. But I think that I add enough to justify why I would want 25%. Ta tangibly, what would you, would you bring? I think that the, the relationships that I've got with the supermarkets, people like Mike Coop, who runs Sainsbury's, or Andy Clark, who looks after Asda, or the, and I can go on, and these are direct relationships. And 25% makes it interesting for me. Should we have a chat? Yeah, thanks. Before we make you a counter offer, I'd like to tell you a few more things. So there's a huge export opportunity and we're getting emails left, right and centre. We're actually in the listing process with Waitrose at the moment and Boots and Whole Foods. We believe there's a real value in this company. Based on what we've just said, we'll counter offer 15%. Guys, I'm, the answer's no. I, I wouldn't go down to 15%. If we drop down to 15, we're at a third each. But that would mean I'd have 25, you'd both have 28 each. And our other investor would have the rest. So you'd be the majority shareholders. You'd still have complete control. You'd own over 50% of the company. Just saying. One more chat. <laughs> I think one of, them, one of them wants to do it, the other one doesn't. Yeah, he's in class, what are you doing? We'd 
love to work with you, but we can't go above 15%. Guys, look, you've made your decision, so I think. Decision. But on the basis of the fact that I'm not willing to change my offer, I'm going to have to say that I'm out. Thank you. Wow. A pitch buzzing with excitement, but resulting in a frustrating finale for the entrepreneurs. Peter Jones may have thought the product was the bee's knees, but not enough to drop his equity demand. It's the right thing to do. Do you know what? I still genuinely wish them the best of luck, oh, though. I hope oh. they make it. Although, I, I hope they don't pinch my idea. It feels slightly crazy to have turned down Peter Jones. <laughs> it was tempting at the time, but I think we probably would have woken up tomorrow and could have regretted it.